coaster ride that not a lot of clients can handle because it's completely inactively managed, okay? So that's not usually the right thing for a lot of our clients. And maybe, again, I hope that you guys have, um, uh, have very robust FFR programs in place. But in case you're not reviewing that life insurance contract each and every year, this is almost one of those set it and forget it plans, I'd say. Remember that Ronco rotisserie? I actually bought one of those. You ever see that? You just set it and forget it. You see those infomercials? All right, I'm, I'm, I can tell my time's almost up here. Okay, that's why I love Sam. Do they cost a little bit more? Yes. Do I think the downside protection is important? Heck yes. So that's why I love these. That's why I'm 100% invested in this one. Okay. How do you get money out of this contract? There was no, uh, make no mistake, the reason that John's daughter was two at the time the contract was issued, I, I did that on purpose, and here's why. All life insurance contracts, the way you take money out, they call it a net loan provision, okay? So the way that our contract works is if you want to take money out in the first 15 years, Farmer's Life is going to charge that client 4.5%, and they simultaneously credit them 2.5%, okay? These are based on current charges, though please note that we have never changed these in the history of having variable life. So they can change, but they had, they've never changed in 12 years. So 4.5 so minus 2.5 is a 2% net loan for the first 15 years. It's a very inexpensive way to borrow money. It is a collateralized, I can never say it, collateralized loan. So your client is in essence paying themselves back. This is not for your client's information. I never want clients um, using their, AT, their uh, cash value like an ATM machine. Um, but I, I'll tell you, back in, in 2008, 2009, when clients were in a very difficult position, people were losing, losing their jobs, having a hard time making mortgage payments, permit life insurance was a salvation for a lot of individuals. We actually have a really cool video um, on LifeNet TV by one of our life reps, or actually ex-life reps, his name is Greg Lapham, and he talked about how cash value life insurance and his, and his policy got him and his wife through some tough times. So really, really cool. But I don't tell clients this. This is for your information only. After year 16, we charge the client two and a half, we credit them two and a half, so it's a 0% net loan for years 16 on. And that's why I did this with the daughter, right? There's a huge asterisk right here. I should probably make it bigger. You gotta keep the policy in force, okay? Ruth, picture this. Your client comes to you and says, Ruth, I am 65 years old. Ruth, I have $620,000 in cash value in here, Ruth. Ruth, give me my 620. By the way, cancel my auto and home while you're at it. And Ruth, you can kick rocks on moving to the Bahamas. And you cancel this policy. They go, uh, 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 Ruth's client. You didn't take a loan. You didn't take a withdrawal. If you cancel this policy, Ruth, your, Ruth's client, you just took income. And that is taxable. That's why I love this income stream in retirement. Because we're not taking out so much money as to blow up this policy. If we took too much money out and the market went down at the same time, we could blow up this client's life policy. That's why I love the income stream in retirement because you're not taking out too much money to blow up the policy and you're providing a very valuable benefit of <coughs> supplemental tax-free income to your client. So, got to keep the policy in force. That is really the, the only way all of this works. I told you a couple of those tricks. When you change the death benefit option from increasing the level, stop making premium payments. Make sure these policies always stay in force. And I'll tell you, that will help you avoid any TEFRA, DEFRA, TAMRA. And here's why we have all these rules in life insurance. In the early 80s and late 70s, when variable universal life was created, say, we had to, say your client went and bought a $100,000 policy. And went, Charles, I'm going to buy a $100,000 policy. I'm going to put in $100,000 in cash. I'm going to let this baby grow tax-free. I'm going to take it out. Does it grow tax-deferred? I take the money out tax-free. It was a loophole. So the government said, no, 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 Charles's clients. You, you, this, is, this, is a, this is a social good, right? It's life insurance. It's there to protect families so they're not going on public assistance, et cetera. But you can't use it like a tax loophole. 
they put in you know, Tefra and then Defra and Tamra to make sure that our clients are still not abusing this amazing Swiss Army knife of financial products, as a lot of people call it. So, how do you fund the policy? I'll tell you, we talked, we first started, I talked about these, these funny numbers here. Minimum premium, that's called what we never use, okay? And that's how those guys on this fortune on the video, if you're not funding this properly, because a lot, I've seen a lot of individuals, especially with our old FFUL, and Ruth, maybe you have some of these, when interest rates, anyone ever, anyone tried buying a home in the, in the 80s, late 80s? <laughs> what were interest rates like? And we remember crazy. 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12. crazy, right? And so we were selling life policies then. We went, oh, Mr. Client, you buy your FFUL, you pay it for five or ten years, and you never pay again. <laughs> and now that we're in a very different interest rate environment, those clients who were sold, uh, hey, you do it, you pay for ten years and you never pay again, they're getting bills and they're kind of mad. So we never use minimum premium. Okay, that's a hardship scenario. Maybe your client comes to you and says, Colleen, I lost my, I'm, I'm, in, I, I'm, in, I'm transitioning from my, my old job to my new job. I can't make that $400 premium payment. I need to make a, a lesser payment. Maybe you pay it for a month or two. It's a hardship scenario, okay? Not what we ever sell this at. Target premium, that, I hate that word. If I could do one thing for, for our clients and for our agents, I would change that word. Because target premium, Agents think, oh man, I paid Target, I hit the nail right on the head, right? I paid the right amount. Target, and I'll tell you, in, our, in the F, the essential series of products, it is an amount that is reasonably expected to keep this policy in force, but it's not guaranteed. It is the number at which point in time you guys get a 50% commission. That is all it means. So the right way to fund this policy is somewhere between Target and again, this scenario, it was a 19, almost 1900 bucks. And I'll tell you, the initial guideline level, that's the easiest way to do this. And again, if we had more time and I really felt like putting you guys to sleep, I would teach you about these. But here's the thing. Go to page um, 11 of 15. <coughs> and again, these were all put in place under Tefra, Defra, and Tamra, all of these guidelines. Here's the one you want to remember. You can put in, your client can put in, the initial guideline level. So in this particular example, it is $6,661. You can put that amount in each and every year until your client turns 100, okay? This will always be life insurance. You will never violate MEC, Tamra, Tefra, Defra. You will always be safe, right? Just know this. <laughs> Seven pay premium does not mean you can pay seven thousand dollars and twenty seven seven oh two seven for seven years. It's not what it means. You actually have to take the seven pay premium, divide it by the initial guideline single. Basically, what it means is you can put in seven thousand bucks for like three years, and then you got to stop making. Pre it's a pain in the neck, and it's a slippery slope, quite frankly. So again, when you're thinking about your clients, what's the right way to fund this policy? It is somewhere between target and initial guideline level. And again, you can see the difference between initial guideline level and 7 pay, it's like a couple hundred bucks difference. It's not a lot of money. And also, to that point, in John Murray, we were funding, I think you guys would all agree, we were funding this at a very high level. We're not coming anywhere close to initial guideline level. So it's not like we're shortchanging our clients, okay? It's an easy rule of thumb for you guys not to have to worry about the laws associated with life insurance. Just let me point yeah. out though that Target is right right around 150 a month. Oh, you're, this is an argument, yes. You're funding at 400 and guideline level would be closer to five something, five a month. Absolutely. And I love doing the monthly because then you are dollar cost averaging. I mean, because this is a variable product <laughs> and because we have those peaks and valleys in the market, you guys remember from your Series 6 test, dollar cost averaging is a very prudent way to invest into the market. So you're taking advantage of the highs and the lows, okay? Okay, I mentioned to you tax for retirement. I mentioned to you AM Best. I mentioned to you the low, okay, Van Miller is actually how he says his name, Van Miller. He is a, um, every year he speaks at the Million Dollar Roundtable um, event. And this year it was in Pennsylvania. And actually some of our farmer's agents took pictures with him. 
pretty cool. We had about 50 agents who actually hit million dollar round table this year, which means you have earned more than 90 some odd thousand in commissions. Pretty awesome. Um, he's amazing. He has DVDs, CDs, a monthly newsletter. He has, if you ever want to get, again, get crazy excited about life insurance and about, very passionate about what we do, um, check out what he puts together. He is, he is, he's probably the best life insurance salesman in the world, I'd say, probably by far. Um, Finally, another pop quiz. Anyone have any idea how many times the average client asks, or their average agent asks for a life insurance sale before they actually get it? Seven. Seven. You are good. I wish I had a prize. Pick one of those things. Get that. You just, you just pull that one out of your head. That is seven. That's, That's awesome. Yeah. The so again, you've asked your client, oh no, I have life insurance through work. Oh no, I listen to Dave Ramsey and don't believe in that junk. Be diligent about what you guys do, guys, because you never know when your client's situation is going to change. Maybe their mom recently passed away with a big estate, and they're, they're, they're fighting like dogs and cats with their <coughs> brothers and sisters. Maybe they had a young cousin pass away who left a wife and three daughters at home, and they're losing their house. Be very diligent about what you guys do. It's very important. I'm very proud and very thankful to be here. Thanks for having me, Darren. And with that, we are right at 11 o'clock. I, I want to so. close. Oh, please. Thank you to Rachel. And I'm going to ask you to promise to do this again. Oh, at two some years. point in the future. Oh, yeah, two years. <laughs> All right. Only because what I'd like from the, the, those of you who are here, go back and tell your other friends that are farmers agents that they missed a huge opportunity because I think you'd agree that this is a terrific presentation and if you can master these concepts, you should be very excited about some of the... Uh, you make a lot of money. And you make a lot of money at the same time, right? I did a look, I did some quick math and I that 12 minute video, which yeah. was the um, Miss Fortune. If you watch that video 10 times, probably your, your, your head would get wrapped around that concept. Would you agree? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's a two hour investment of your time. If you did watch that video 10 times, and, and the fact is, if you have that much knowledge and confidence after watching that thing for, for 10 times, I think you find it maybe it's very easy to bring these concepts up to your customers and talk to them about it. So, anyway, so thank you very much for coming. Uh, for those of you who are about to get licensed, obviously this is one more great reason to get that done. And for those of you who are already licensed but don't do a lot of EUL, this is a great reason for you to go back and start talking to customers about it. So, thanks again. Thank you very much. Girls from, I, I will be back. Though.